should be good to go. All right, so let's go ahead and date it. Today is January 13th. All right, and section P-3, which is anything and everything to do with radicals. All right, so again, it's a review section. All right, everything we do today would have been an entire chapter in Algebra 2. Okay, so we're just kind of touching the surface. All right, so obviously square roots, um, you should have pretty down pat. If they're real simple ones, you ought to know how to be able to handle negatives. You ought to also be able to handle like variables with exponents. All right, so just as a variety of little examples here. If I've got negative on the outside and I'm gonna do perfect square roots just so the math works out really nice for right now. All right, negative on the outside, square root like normal, throw the negative in front. Okay, so there's nothing too complicated about that. All right, now if um, right now, at this point in this textbook, we have not been introduced to imaginary numbers yet. So they are going to assume that you don't know what an imaginary number is. So if they give you something like the square root of negative 36, you're just going to say that it's not real right now. Okay, in because we're only in section P3 of the book, imaginary numbers come later. So they're assuming you don't know the, that imaginary numbers exist. Okay, it would be what, 6i though? We do know that the answer, if I answer it using imaginary numbers, is going to be 6i because you had that in algebra too. Um, now let's take a look at some like variables with exponents. All right, if I'm doing square roots and I have an even exponent, all right, so as long as that exponent right there is even, then it is a perfect square, right? Because it's find something which multiplied by itself equals what's underneath. All right, well, if you stop and think about this, x squared times x squared, when multiplying like bases, we add those exponents. All right, so I can find something which multiplies by itself to equal what's underneath. All right, which means then my answer is just x squared. Okay, now, if it's an odd exponent, I think I'm gonna come down here for odd exponent. All right, you have to do a little bit more work, but this will work the same way, all right, for all of them. All right, so this is an odd exponent. All right, now, I can still simplify this, all right, I can simplify it by doing a little tree, all right, basically, what do I need to do? I need to take this x to the seventh, take that exponent, and then I need to keep decreasing one until I find an even exponent. And if it's an odd number, then all I'm going to do is decrease it one time. So think down x to the sixth. x to the sixth is a perfect square root. So I want to break this up into an x to the sixth times an x to the sixth times what will give me the x to the seventh? Well, it would have to be an x to the first power. So basically, every time if I've got an odd exponent like this, when I break it up, it's always going to be one less even exponent, and this will be a plain x, which means then what? This right here is an x to the third, okay? For that same reason, you take half the exponent, all right? And then square root of x is just square root of x. So it does simplify, and we can take square root of an x to the seventh. All right, looks like a lot of people are getting kicked out. Yesterday, my Zoom right at the end of the meeting. All right, so that getting kicked out thing not working is, is happening a lot. Okay, um, now with that, that's kind of basic, the easy ones, everything, we ought to be really good with those. Let's do some quotients. Okay, let's do some quotients. All right, if um, I have one great big radical, over a, a quotient, like 49 over 16. I'll do it with perfect square roots, all right? So there is a rule that says I can break that up into two individual radicals. So I can do square root of 49 over square root of 16. All right, most of you are gonna leave that step out because you're just gonna go straight to seven over four, all right? Um, but knowing the fact that you can do that allows you to simplify more complicated ones. All right, I can also reverse this. If I have two radicals that are being divided separately, I can put them under one and then I can algebraically do whatever I want to what's underneath. So for example, if I had say the square root of a 48 X to the third, 
over say the square root of 3x. All right, well, I can't take square root of 3. I can't really take square root of 48, not perfectly anyway. So the easiest thing to do with this, I've got two separate right. So there is a rule that says we can make it under one big radical. So 48 x to the third over a 3x. All right, what that's going to allow me to do then is use algebra, use my laws of exponents, simplify what's underneath here. So 48 divided by 3 is like a 16. All right, an x to the third over an x, that's going to give me an x squared. Now it's down to something where I can take the square root of that. That's a perfect square, this is as well, so 4x. Okay, so the quotient rule here going back and forth between the two are, are very, very common. All right, questions so far? Are we doing pretty good? This stuff so far has been pretty simple, and I'm assuming since it is review and we had lots of practice with this, you're good so far.